What's up everybody and welcome. We're actually at our first job. We're just waiting for a little bit of a break so we can get out to the boat. It's a 236 Grady White Fisherman. Pretty cool little boat. We put a trolling motor on the front of it and it has a 36 volt lithium ion battery in it. So we ordered a special charger. So let me shuttle everything to the boat here. See if I can keep everything dry and I'll show you everything we're doing. Look how pretty this is going out to the boat. And she's so got a cover around her where we need to put this charger so it's perfect. We can get it done. So here she is. The 236 is a cool boat. It's about the perfect size you need to jump, get around the bay and everything else here. Plus it's a Grady, so you know it's going to ride really good. I'll right, show you the boat a little bit before the uh, rain gets us more here. Yeah, this thing's rigged pretty nicely. Got a big Garmin in it, our Yamaha gauge. It's all electronic controls like always. Got trim tabs here. It's actually one of the problems we're going to look at here. They said those trim tabs are not working, so we'll diagnose that. This one even has a windlass on it. Look up front here. So we put a trolling motor on this boat. The wind looks nice. We put a trolling motor on it. Here's the bracket for it. Obviously, you can take it on and off. But it's 36 volts. So yeah, if you look back here behind our helm seat here, there's a compartment back here is for storage. We installed a 36 volt lithium battery. It's pretty cool. Uh, doesn't weigh like it only weighs 35 pounds. Also is uh, 60 amp hours at 36 volts is a lot because the more you step up voltage, the more you actually have efficiency in the system. So basically we got to install the charger. I was thinking since we have the plug in right here for it already, we'll put it right here on the wall. We'll see if it fits. So let me show you that charger, it's pretty cool. All right, so what we have here is the NOCO Genius GX3626, which is 36 volts and 26 amps. When you look at it, it's got a couple of cool features. This is all waterproof, so you got to unscrew this in order to select the mode you want. All right, so if you pull this cover off, right here you got a, it's all waterproof. You got an O-ring in here and everything. Here is your mode selector. So we're gonna have to select our lithium ion mode. And it also has repair. You can like cycle old batteries to see if they'll come back. And it also will supply 36 volts if you wanna just bypass the battery. That's a really cool feature too. All right, before we install this charger here, let me, uh, since we got a little bit of break in the rain, let me check these trim tabs. He said they're not working, so let me fire the batteries up and we'll diagnose that real quick. Well, I was wrong. Like I had to, I covered this whole area up here because the weather's getting bad, it's blowing around. But I'm protected in here. We're good for now. So let's check our trim tabs. Turn our key on. So this, if we got flashing back and forth, just means that they're not synced up with each other because you have to tell it when it's fully up or fully down. And what you do is you hold these two moon and sun buttons together, and that should tell me to deploy them all the way down. So now we hold it all the way down. And then you should stop blinking and tell me to hold them all the way up. Alright, so what happened there is it's actually not even moving them. I'm not sure if we've lost power or what's happening, but we got power to our keypad, so it's not actually registering. We should see those bars moving down as I'm holding the down button here. So what we have to do is find out why the tabs are not moving. All right, so let's go inside of our console here. This right here, I'm shining a light on, is our control box. That is our usual suspect of what goes bad. This box right here, for some reason, it gets input, but it won't signal out from the relay to move the tabs. I might have another one of these boxes in the van. Let me go check real quick. All right, so I didn't have one in the van, but I do have a pad. So what we can do is plug this in downstairs real quick, that way, we can check it because I can't push these buttons and check for power down there and at the same time my arms are not long enough. So let me plug this in. Just gonna plug in the bottom and put power to these couple spots here. Then we'll be able to see if I need a new box or not. All right, so we got our new switch just plugged in real quick. I got the wires just onto our fuse panel here. I just stuck them in their fuse holes. And what you just heard there is my power probe. We're gonna use our power probe and see what we got coming out of our box up here. So first, actually, you can probably hear this. Listen to the box when I push the button. It sounds like the relay is working, but it's not letting power through. So what we're gonna do is check and see if we get any power or anything coming out of the box to where the motor is in the back. So if we unplug this out of the way, 
this, this harness right here. This should be giving us power and ground out to make those motors move or up and down, whatever. It turns the motor on one way or the other and some check valves in order to get the fluid to move for the Bennett. Fun fact, Bennett is actually owned by uh, Yamaha now. All right, let's see if I can do this with one hand here. So we got it stuck to the wire that should run the motor either way. So I should be getting a power signal. If I go any way on this, I got nothing. And no, no output on the box here. So that means this box is bad. We have to get a new box for it because I don't have one. It also sounds like perfect timing because I don't hear the rain as much. So let's go install that charger. All right, so what I figure I'll do here is see if this fits right here. Cut this cord. She's heavy. So it looks like, yeah, we could stick this thing pretty much anywhere on the wall right here. It'll be perfect. It'll be out of the way. And you can still have all of his storage space left on here on the port side. So we can put it about anywhere here. So I can kind of just shoot a hole somewhere in here to start. And we can get this thing mocked up and figured out. All right, so what I've done now is stuck a screw in it so it's hanging by itself. The way I can just throw a drill in into right here and to the other side. All right, now we'll do the same thing on this side. We'll stick a screw in here. That way I can hang it and then we can do the bottom too. So all right, we're all through bolted here. We got our charger hanging on the other side now. We gotta take this guy off here so we can cut the wires so we can make our plug work. All right, so we got it out of there. We already pre-installed everything at the shop before we were just waiting for that charger. This thing is pretty cool. You just cut your end off and you feed it into here. That way you can just plug it in, you're ready to go, you don't have no cord hanging, nothing else. This thing's flush mounted, waterproof. So let's get our wire out of there, we'll cut it. All right, so we got our cord out, but this is actually way too long, but I don't want to cut it so it's perfect. We want to leave some extra, because what happens if you get corrosion over time or anything like that, we can cut this wiring back and make sure that we have a little extra for a service loop. So we'll probably cut it somewhere about right here. That way you have all that extra right there. We'll just tie that up inside. So now we want to get our three wires out of here so that we can install them into the back of our piece here. They're, they're color coded too. You got black, which is always our power. The neutral is white. And then green is our common or ground. So let me get this cut up and we'll get it fed into these spots here so we can get it back together. The weather's getting worse. All right, so I got our wires stripped back here. Essentially what you want to make sure of is that you have nothing exposed. Put the wire down in the hole, you got nothing hanging out there. That way all you got to do is screw that little screw down and it locks the wire in place. Let me get these three in there and we'll stick it back in our hole here. All right, so this is reinstalled. Now let's get to our battery. All right, so back on this side, we are all tied up on the top. I'll show you. I got that tied up there nicely. And here is our power and ground. We also have a big fuse here. 50 amp that we're going to want to keep. So what I'll do is I'll probably tie that to here. So what I'm going to do first is take these off. That way we can get our terminals on and then we'll tie everything up. That's a good idea too. If you're going to do this, this thing has a breaker up here. Turn your breaker off. That way you're not pushing power anywhere. You don't have something on or whatever. Any battery situation. Always make sure you don't have anything on or running when you pull power on and off of something. So what we'll do here is this got a lot of extra wire, but I can't cut it because it's got a fuse. We'll just tie this up nicely after we get everything in place. All right, so this is almost tight here. Get this tightened down. It's got gold screws, pretty awesome. If you're looking to get a lithium battery like this, I know that this one costs over $1,000 just for the battery alone. I'm sure this charger right here is not cheap either. All right, so our terminals are both installed. Now let's put our covers on, then we can tie our wiring up here. We'll get this tied up and I'll show you what I've done. All right, so I tied the wiring up. Here's our fuse. We got it tied on both sides. That way you can check it real quick if you need to. I've taken the extra wire and looped it up here high. 
because I know this is supposed to be dry in here, but it's a boat and I don't want anything that has water or anything laying, this thing laying in water so that it can cause it to uh, have electrolysis or anything weird happen to it. I've noticed in the past that if you get wires laying in water for a long time, it'll actually ruin them. It, for some reason, starts to harden the wiring. So all right, we got our charger in, our battery's all done, we got our covers on. She's hanging, she's mounted, she's not loose or anything, nice and tight. And all you gotta do is plug it in and push his buttons and you can select whatever he wants here. So that's it for this boat. I'll stay away from my video because I am soaking wet. I'm gonna shut all those tools and everything back to Oscar and uh, call it a day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Later.